By the late 1980s, Group C racing had garnered nearly as much audience popularity as the F1 category. Consequently, authorities opted to align Group C engine regulations with those of F1, aiming to attract constructors to the sport in the long term. Although this move ultimately contributed to the Group C's decline, the resilient Peugeot, having achieved significant success in endurance racing, boldly transitioned to F1 with a V10 engine. However, this venture quickly turned into a nightmare for the French manufacturer. By 1989, original Group C cars were pushing speeds exceeding 250 miles per hour. In an attempt to revolutionize the class, the FIA proposed the introduction of F1 derived 3.5 litre engines. Although these engines resulted in lower speeds, they were significantly more costly to manufacture, rendering them accessible only to major manufacturers. Following the prohibition of the Group B class, the Peugeot factory team found themselves in need of a new direction for their racing pursuits. Under the leadership of team chief Jean Todt, they decided to explore something new. The announcement came for the development of an endurance racing car for the 1991 season. The result was the 905, a clean sheet design featuring a carbon fiber monocoque crafted by aviation manufacturer Dassault. Paired with an in-house developed aluminum alloy V10 engine, directly bolted into the chassis. This V10 engine, among the first of its kind at the time, set a trend that would be followed by many in the ensuing decade. Just two years after the project's initiation, the first running prototype was unveiled to the public and participated in a few late rounds of races in 1990. While it could not match the performance of all the Group C cars, which were soon to face further penalties, it showcased remarkable competitiveness against comparable 3.5-litre counterparts. The engine, dubbed the SA35A1, was meticulously crafted for this project. It boasted an unconventional 80-degree bang angle, resulting in a slightly narrower longitudinal profile compared to the more traditional 90-degree units. Despite this deviation, it adhered to conventional design principles, featuring a four-valve setup and twin gear-driven double overhead cam heads. Notable standard features included ITBs, EFI, and dry sum oiling system. The initial model closely resembled Peugeot's road league counterparts of the time. However, throughout the 1991 season, its design underwent revisions to enhance downforce in response to faster competitors. Every aspect, save for the monocoque, was carefully optimized. Initially grappling with speed and reliability issues, Peugeot made crucial modifications and achieved a notable 20 horsepower increase from an updated engine. This propelled the French team to gather notable points ultimately securing a third-place finish in the championship. Although they did not finish the 24 hours of Le Mans in 1991, the following season saw a remarkable turnaround, with the team clinching first and second positions in the championship and securing first and third places at the Le Mans. Notably, in 1992, the Peugeot 905 claimed pole position at Magny Course, posting a time that would have qualified in the F1 grid that same year. In 1993, for the first time in 40 years, the World Sports Car Championship was not held. However, the 3.5-litre engines were permitted to participate in the prestigious 24-hour French race. 
equipped with an updated version, the 905B boasting 725 horsepower, Peugeot achieved a historic victory, securing first, second and third positions, echoing Ford's triumph in the 1966 race. Indeed, the grid saw unprecedented vacancies due to the stringent and costly 3.5 litre engine regulations. However, for the relatively inexperienced French team, it marked a monumental triumph. In 1994, McLaren found itself in search of a new engine supplier. Ron Dennis, the then chief of McLaren, harbored concerns over the unreliability of the Lamborghini LE 3512, unlike Ayrton Senna, who enjoyed its performance. With a string of successes in endurance racing, Peugeot emerged as an appealing option. With the impressive track record of the V10, A1 and A2 units, Peugeot managed to sway Dennis into signing a contract with the French manufacturer. The Peugeot A4, representing a further evolution of the V10, bore significant similarities to its endurance counterpart. However, to meet the heightened power demands of Formula 1, adjustments were made. The bang angle was reduced to 75 degrees, and the RPM range was increased. This facilitated by larger 93mm bores and the introduction of pneumatic valve springs. In place. Hear the brakes squeal. Carbon, carbon, they still squeal. The 1994 A4 engine was estimated to produce 720 horsepower at 14,250 RPM, though it fell short compared to Renault's offering of 770 horsepower at 14,500 RPM. Despite the subsequent A6 iteration boasting improved reliability and a slight power increase to match Renault, it was a case of too little, too late. Regrettably, the McLaren MP4-9 faced numerous setbacks, frequently succumbing to engine failures and struggling to finish races. Despite the valiant efforts from drivers like Mika Häkkinen and Martin Brundle, it could only manage a fourth position in the championship standings. McLaren's confidence in Peugeot's engine waned due to its poor reliability, leading to the termination of the contract at the end of 1994. The Peugeot engine continued its tenure in Formula 1 until 2000, albeit with little success. It underwent a transformation into a 72-degree 3-liter configuration but failed to make a significant impact. From 1995 to 1997, the Jordan team utilized the engine, followed by the Prost team from 1998 to 2000. However, the engine's performance left much to be desired. The 1998 season proved particularly dismal, although there was a slightly more notable achievement in 1999. Nevertheless, the partnership between Prost and Peugeot soured in 2000 plagued by 22 retirements and zero points scored. As a result, Peugeot made the decision to withdraw from Formula 1 for good, citing a lack of results and financial constraints. Instead, the focus shifted back to rallying and later endurance racing. 